All right guys, so today we finally get started on the last control surface for the tail of the aircraft, which is the elevator. So as you can see, there are a lot of parts involved in this. There's also about 27 pages of instructions that go with that, which is substantially more than we've had in a lot of the other components that we've put together so far. So this section of the build is gonna take a good bit of time for sure. So there'll be multiple videos obviously following that process. First step, as there is with most of this stuff, involves a lot of cutting, deburring, getting things ready to put together. So not my favorite task. So I'll get started on that. You guys can follow along. Let's go build an elevator. If you're new to the channel, along with my other aviation projects, I'm in the early stages of building a Vans RV-14 airplane. As I've documented in previous videos, so far I have completed the vertical stabilizer, the rudder, and the horizontal stabilizer. Now I begin construction on the elevator. The process of converting these parts into an aircraft elevator begins with the creation of a dozen internal ribs to support the airfoil. The two halves of the ribs are separated using a bandsaw. I'll do the same to turn this single stamped piece of aluminum into three shear clips, and then spend a lot of time shaping and deburring the edges of all of them. Next up is the initial assembly of the left and right tip ribs. Each one of these is made up of two ribs joined back to back and then wrapped in a skin. It takes a good bit of time carefully fluting the edges in order to get all the holes to match up. But once they do, the assembly is clicoed together and holes in the webs of the ribs are match drilled to final size. And then the same is done with the skin connects to the flanges. For the aft section of the elevator behind the rear spar and also for the elevator trim tab, some very lightweight ribs are needed. These are created by cutting out some paper templates, which are then glued to some PVC foam blocks. I use the bandsaw to make the initial rough cuts. and then a belt sander to produce the final shape of each. The left half of the elevator is where the trim tab will be located. To separate the trim tab from the elevator back here, an edge is created on the elevator by bending part of the upper and lower halves of the elevator skins to create what is referred to as a closeout tab. To do this, the bend line is marked on each piece as indicated in the instructions. And then the skin is clamped to the edge of the table with just the tab overhanging the edge. Precision is important here as one tab should be folded down 1 64th of an inch beyond the bend line and the other 1 32nd of an inch. This will allow the two halves to sandwich next to each other with a close tolerance for when they're eventually riveted together. The initial bend is made just using a wood block to push down the tab. Next, a rivet gun is used with a flat set and a very low pressure setting to finish the bend. And then finally, a hand seamer is used to adjust the bend to a perfect 90 degrees. The rear spar for the right half of the elevator needs to get trimmed just a little. And now 
we start to put some of this stuff together and start lining things up. This begins with clecoing the front and rear spars to the bottom skins, along with the internal ribs we created in the first step. Root ribs are clecoed to the interior edges. A couple of gussets are inserted into the corners for added strength, and the structure for compartment which will eventually house the trim tab servo is added to complete the internal skeleton. The skeleton's all there, the bottoms are attached. So the next step up is to attach the hinge back here that's going to attach to the trim tab. And then we'll put our tip ribs on the ends of that. And then that'll take us up to the part where we're going to go ahead and put the top skin on. And uh, from there, just some more final details to get these done. So. So far, so good. There are things going together nice. So we'll just keep moving on from there. Next up, we create a hinge for the trim tab. This begins by locating, marking, and drilling a pilot hole in each half of a piano hinge. The forward half of the hinge is clecoed at the pilot hole and then clamped to the top half of the rear spar. The hinge is then match drilled using the holes in the spar as a guide. And any excess hinge is marked and trimmed away. The aft half is similarly match drilled to attach it to the trim tab spar. Once joined together, the hinge halves will allow the trim tab to pivot on the trailing edge of the elevator. The tip ribs are now attached to their respective ends, and the trailing edges and top skins are fitted into the structure. This step lines up the closeout tabs that we created by bending the skins early on in the build. Holes are now match drilled and clecoed here to close up the tabs and connect them to this shear clip. Alright, well everything looks like it's really coming together here. Got basically both assemblies completely clecoed together. Got these trailing edges marked where they're going to get trimmed off. Next major component after that is doing some work with the elevator horns and then the other half of the hinge for the trim tab which goes here. So that's the next step as well is to start assembling the actual trim tab itself. And then start putting some dimples and things about a third of the way through the plans I think at this point. So yeah, take a break for today, come back to it and keep moving on. The last step in this initial fitting of everything is to clico the elevator horns to their respective elevator halves. The horns are what will eventually be connected to the push rods, allowing the elevator to be moved with a control stick from the cockpit. The horns are clecoed in place and then final drilled to the correct size. Next up, I need to fabricate the horn, which will mount to the trim tab and connect the trim tab motor to actually move the trim tab. It's made from two halves. So first I'll clico them together and mark them per the instructions. Next, I trim them to final size, deburr the edges, and reassemble. After priming the halves will get riveted together. And finally it's time for the initial assembly of the trim tab itself. A very simplistic design the trim tab consists of an upper and lower skin joined at the forward edge by a spar and at the aft edge by a trailing edge stiffener. Three of the lightweight foam ribs provide the minimally required additional internal support. 
Next, the whole assembly is clecoed together with one of the foam ribs temporarily taped into position at each end of the trim tab. The closeout holes are then match drilled and the whole thing is taken back apart. The trailing edge gets countersunk on both the top and bottom sides, making sure the hole is cut perpendicular to each surface. Vans provides guidance to taper the pilot on a countersink cutter for this purpose, but I chose to buy one already modified for the specific purpose. The aft half of the trim tab hinge that I match drilled earlier for the spar is clecoed to the underside of the upper half of the spar, and then the spar is countersunk to allow the two parts to eventually be flush riveted together. The bottom half of the spar is similarly dimpled to accept the dimples and flush rivets, which will attach the bottom skin of the trim tab. On the inside of the skins, the area where the ribs and the trailing edge attach are gonna be bonded with adhesive and therefore need to be scuffed and prepped for that. Because I'm gonna be priming the interior, I mark off these areas and after scuffing them, we'll need to mask them off before priming. And that's it. So now for my not so favorite part, everything is disassembled so that all the remaining holes and edges can be deburred, lots of dimpling of skins and other parts were needed. And then everything gets scuffed, prepped, and primed. So I'll pick back up in the next video after all that fun stuff is over and begin the final assembly. All right, so about the first third of the elevator assembly is complete. Any holes that needed to be match drilled, those have been match drilled. The vast majority of this stuff was already final punched by van, so the skins that need any match drilling, there was a little bit on the, uh, on the tips that needed to be done. Had to match drill the holes for the yeah, elevator horns here. The rest of it, it was just kind of assembly, getting everything lined up, test fitting everything. So not too bad. The next step really is to kind of take it all back apart. A lot of stuff that needs to get dimpled, obviously, and then prepped for priming, and then the final reassembly to rivet everything together. Making good progress, like I said, about a third of the way done. So this is probably the first of three videos, maybe two. We'll see how the second half of this goes. Yeah, thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit the like button if you like the video. Uh, that helps out the channel quite a bit. Subscribe if you haven't. And yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.